Imagine being the CEO of a video game company, with dozens of developers working for months and years on projects that may or may not succeed financially. Your games might be on the final stage, already in beta testing. You deal with all aspects of the release, making sure that if the company you're in charge of doesn't make a lot of profits, at least you can keep the ship afloat. Your games must be successful, so you can keep paying your developers the hardware and licenses, just so everyone involved can keep going. That's what many companies in the video game community are living since years and one wrong move can make or break your entire ecosystem then one day on top of all the charges you're facing the company that owns the runtime system of your games suddenly comes with a new fee for those who don't understand game needs, the runtime is the part of your video game engine that allows your games to have graphics rendered on a certain device alongside audio playback and inputs ending which means you can't play the game without that component usually a game engine is paid by numbers of seats so more developers you have, the more seats you buy. There might be some variation in the pricing system, but it was pretty clear and consistent. Now Unity, from one day to the next, has decided to introduce a runtime installation fee. A tiny amount that the developers will pay each time a game is installed. Bruh. You heard me well. Installed, what? not bought. Installed. In other words, even if your game is free, you are charged for the installation and all reinstallations, even on the same device. As long as you pass a threshold of 200,000 installations or $200,000 in revenue, you will have to pay the fee. No to give you more context, there used to be three main plans used at Unity. The free plan for students and hobbyists like me. I made a pretty basic game for free and that was fun. Then you had the plus plan that allowed you to customize the splash screen. So instead of having made with Unity, you could place your logo on it. There was an integration with collaboration tools, but for 400 bucks, that was pretty much it. Then you had the pro plan at $2,000 per year per seat. Then the enterprise plan. So Unity just got rid of the plus plan without previous notice. Gone. You're now either on the personal free plan, either you have to pay five times more the pro plan just to keep working on the game. Now added to that, you will start January 1st, 2024, have to pay a fee for each installation of the game. Obviously, after that announcement, Unity faced a cataclysmic backlash, so they are tiptoeing and changing their explanations. But their first explanation was, you are charged 20 cents per installation on the personal plan. Be the game sold for a penny or 10 bucks, doesn't matter. Even if the game is free, you pay the installation. You, the developer of the game. So technically, if your free game is successful, you automatically own a debt to Unity. Then comes the piracy issue, where Unity says they won't count pirated version. But how? How are they gonna do that? Nobody knows. Especially as fingerprinting devices is illegal without consent, and up to now, Unity told us they don't have information on users' devices. That's a good plot for Scooby-Doo right here. Now let's say someone wants to harm you. Buys the game legally, or not, doesn't matter at that point. They install it, reinstall it, re-reinstall it, and so on. Maybe with a computer's farm or virtual machines, you are fucked. And that's where the big no-no started. Now, if you're on the pro and enterprise plan, fees are lower. But still, who had that old plan to charge per installation and potentially bankrupt your clients? You can get some clues of what is happening internally at Unity knowing that the CEO of Unity is the former CEO of EA Games. And there's a battle between app loving and iron source for the in-game ad revenues. If you're interested, I leave Upper Echelon's video link in the description. But what does all that mess mean for the developers? Well. Unity already had been caught lacking in the past, multiple times. I don't know the specifics, I was just fooling around programming basic games for the sake of it, but that track record from Unity placed developers on the edge, and many moved to Unreal and Godot. That last announcement, whatever happened next, has deeply broken the trust of game developers beyond repair. Even if Unity reversed their policy, which is unlikely, the trust is gone. The community has been so shocked and appalled by this new fee, they've decided almost unitarily to stop the in-game ad revenue system, impacting Unity at the source but also themselves as collateral damage. Unity also deleted its GitHub repository that tracks the terms of service and license updates. A Twitter called Fuck by Unity, with more than 400 posts, brings light to how many developers are fed up with Unity and most are living for other game engines. There's a collective letter sent to Unity grouping more and more companies by the day, explaining why and how they will make their voice heard, even if that means to lose profit they deserve to get. Unity could have never made a better publicity for Unreal and Godot. 
The backlash is so bad, they received death threats from their own employees and had to close offices for a few days. Now let's make it clear, Unity's employees are not to blame whatsoever. They told the direction in charge that this approach to pricing would create more harm than good. But if Unity doesn't listen to their employees, maybe they will listen to their bank account. And that's why, as a CEO, you can't just change your policies without taking into account the livelihood of others. You are not meant to fight against your clients, but work in harmony with them towards a greater good. In that environment, we can see why more and more people have lost trust in the big corporations, searching alternatives to stay free and have their peace of mind intact. It's the same in the music industry, where we realize most of it is fake inflated streaming numbers, where artists don't really get what they deserve. I've been following Curtis King for a while now. And outside of being a music producer, the part where I can relate is what he calls the DIY community. Those who go by the principle of do it yourself. DIY. You're giving that message to an industry that it may look like is ran by artists, but these artists more likely than not, are following instructions from their investors. I think it's time that we start taking those steps because if you look at the music industry to set the standard for you, that's the wrong place to look. If we cannot trust these big corporations, we will have to find alternatives ourselves. Because what we are facing right now isn't just some dumb corporate decision makers. It's way bigger than that. It's potentially ending in a situation where we have no other option than to bow to our masters those who own the operating system. There's a lot of resources online if you want more details on that matter, but from my perspective, I may keep coding some c sharp here and there, but I always make sure that my feet are on solid ground. I'm not trusting anyone just because that's the norm, and I hope to see more of us looking towards a future where freedom and rights have a meaning. Peace.